डियर फ्रेंड्स मैं सस्पिरेंट्स इज ए कलेक्टिव ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स स्टूडेंट्स रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स एंड फैकल्टी मेंबर्स अक्रॉस इंडिया इनिशिएटेड बाय माय सेल्फ इन 2017 एंड वी यूज्ड टू कंटेक्ट ऑनलाइन प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशन एंड ऑनलाइन टेस्ट सीरीज टू हेल्प द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर डिफरेंट नेशनल लेवल कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जामिनेशंस एज ए पार्ट ऑफ दैट सीरीज टुडे वी हैव ए सेशन ऑन selected problems from linear algebra and uh, we have miss ravina ganesh with us to engage the problem solving session miss ravina is currently pursuing phd at nicer bhuvaneshwar she did her bsc from din dayal upadhyaya college delhi university and uh, msc from jawaharlal nehru university delhi and she qualified iit jam as well as ccr net examination and currently pursuing phd i would like to thank revina for being with math aspirants group and uh, engage and handling this uh, agreed to handle the problem solving session on uh, linear algebra she will discuss selected problems from jam question paper Or uh, and uh, CSER net uh, or NBHM question papers too. I show I am sure that uh, today's session will be really helpful uh, to all of you as the examinations are uh, very near. Uh, I hope that everyone will enjoy the session. I welcome everyone to this program. I welcome Ravina. Okay, thank you, sir. So we are already late. So I think we should start with the session. Okay. So one thing I would like to mention is just I have uh, solved the questions and not checked with the answer. So please keep a watch if I am making some mistake and please let me know. Okay. So okay. So we will start with the basic ones and will gradually increase our level of difficulty. So. first set of questions is from jam 2021 uh, paper of linear algebra so let us start with our first one okay so first let me know that are there just bsc students or some msc students or preparing for net gate etc are there just to know uh, the level of knowledge you guys have yeah ravina we have both bsc students as well as msc okay. students okay uh, i'll introduce the concepts but, but just to get a idea okay let us start so first question is i think this was from mcq for an integer k greater than equal to 1 let p k denote the vector space of all real polynomial in one variable of degree less than or equal to q now there is uh, there is given a linear operator from p2 to p3 Which is given by that sum f x goes to double derivative of f plus x times f x. So the question asks that which of the following is not in the range of t? Okay. So first option is x square plus x. Second is this. Third is this, and these are all the options. So during uh, during your level, I mean at B S C level, one should keep in mind that for us it is not. very much necessary that we should know the proof and all these stuff but at the jam level we should be able to eliminate the options fine so here this is what we are going to do so let us look at the option b first okay so option b has answer x square plus x cube plus 2 fine so let us try to fit in this equation that whether Whether uh, this is of some this form for some, let us try to see that if this equation can be made of this form for some f x. Fine. So here we have similarity with this term. So x f x is equals to x times x square plus x. So let us. Uh, By hit and try, let us take f x to be x square plus x. Whether this works or not, so its double derivative is two. 
find it and we get our answer to be this so for the uh, this part fx t fx becomes if we take fx to be this so this becomes double derivative of this is 2 plus x time x square plus x so this is 2 plus x cube plus x square and this was our option d this one hence for this f, uh, for this fx for this fx we get t fx is equals to this this thing so this option d lies in the range again for c we will check for t again we do the same thing we take fx is equals to we take fx is equals to x square plus 1 now look how do we i mean guess that what uh, this should be in the range this is by seeing that we have this thing x cube plus 2 so this is we take x out and this becomes x square plus 1 plus 2 so by hit and try let us take fx to be this and then check whether it lies in the range or it satisfies the given condition or not so we take fx is equals to this for the part c and then we check that t of fx is equals to f double derivative is 2 here again in this case then x times fx which is x square plus 1 so this is 2 plus x cube plus x so this was the given answer so c also lies in the range now for d for part d we have we take fx is equals to x plus 1 itself then we check t of fx is equals to f double derivative of x which is zero in this case for x plus 1 when we uh, differentiate fx twice we get zero plus x times x plus 1 Plus x times x plus one, so this is x square plus x. Fine. So was that the answer? This is for a. So this also lies in the range of t. So we have a lies in the range, b lies in the range, c lies in the range, and one should be the answer. Okay. So can anybody tell me what should be the final answer for this? hello d option ma'am d option uh, okay okay thank you so please speak in between uh, otherwise i will not be able to understand with where what if you are getting it or not okay so now uh, coming over to the next question so this question says that if m is a 3 cross 3 real matrix and we are given the eigen vectors of this m corresponding to three distinct eigen values of n so n has three distinct eigen values let us say lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 and we are given the corresponding eigen vectors to be this so the question asks then which of the following is not a possible value of alpha so there should be one alpha which cannot be a possible sorry Uh, did anyone say anything? Okay. No, so, Ravina, you uh, can. Uh, ha ha. Okay. Then the question asks that which of the following is not a possible value of alpha? Okay. So let me define formally one that what is an eigen value and what is an eigen vector. Okay. So explanation. So we have let. This is the explanation where I'll define the. Uh, Eigen values and eigen vectors. So let A be a n cross n matrix. Let us say real only. Okay. Take it. Then lambda, then lambda in R is an eigen value. Eigen value of A. If there exists an eigen vector, there exists a, there exists a non-zero and A non-zero, sorry, a non-zero x in M n cross one of R such that non-zero is very important here, so that a x is equals to lambda x. Then lambda 
is said to be an eigen value and x is said to be an eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value eigen value lambda fine so this is the definition now this eigen value has certain properties which i will mention you do not need to know the proof of these properties but you can just cram for the timing and learn the proof later in msc maybe okay so properties if how are these eigen values calculated if a is in n cross n matrix then just then eigen values are b roots of the equation the equation determinant of a minus xi is equals to 0 fine so eigen value are root of this equation and this is a this becomes a polynomial in x and by solving this polynomial we get eigen values okay second property is there are at most n eigen values for this matrix n cross n matrix a there are at most n eigen values can somebody tell me from the property one that why are there at most n eigen values it's very easy someone should try characteristic characteristic polynomial is of degree n right very good so there can be at most n eigen values okay fine in r remember we are taking this lambda in r in c there will there can be more than i mean there can be n eigen values as well but in r we have at most n eigen values there cannot be more than n eigen values fine third property is this is very important and just pay attention on this property because from this property only you will have to solve the question the given question okay so if lambda 1 till lambda k are distinct eigen values eigen values of a note that a has to be less than equal to n and x1 till xk are the corresponding eigen vector corresponding eigen vectors that is a x i is equals to lambda i x i for i belonging to the set 1 to k then this set is linearly independent x1 x2 till xk is a linearly independent subset of independent subset of m n cross 1 r okay okay so now we will be using this property to solve our given question so let us see the question again now if we are given that these three are the eigen vectors of n excuse me ravina it will be better okay. to keep the screen in the horizontal mode uh, Sir, actually, that way I'm not able to write properly. Then, so that is why. Maybe I'll try again. Okay. Thanks. See, actually, in the recording, you know, otherwise uh, your screen will be very small. Okay, that's why. Okay. Oh. So whenever okay. possible, keep it in the horizontal mode. Okay. Okay, sir. I I'll try. Okay. 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 So now in this question, we are given three three distinct vectors. I mean, three cross one matrices, and they ask. Ask whether they are the eigen uh, vectors or not, and if they are, for which value it is possible that these three are the eigen vectors, and for which value, for which value of alpha this cannot be an eigen vector. So one property, a set of eigen vectors should satisfy, as we saw now, that the set should be linearly independent. Fine. So 
to know that which is not a possible value of alpha we should look at for which value of alpha this set is not linearly independent fine okay so this is what we will do now okay fine so let us assume that there exists c1 c2 c3 in r so can somebody tell me uh, how can we check the linear independence of these three vectors anybody c1 times shikha determinant determinant uh, fine ha huh, very good determinant so determinant is one way and so we check that for which value of alpha there exist one of these ci is not equal to 0 so that this equation has a solution this is equals to 0 okay so uh, the first option says that if alpha is 0 fine so solving this we get c1 plus c2 plus 0 times c3 is 0 then 2 c1 plus first we are solving for option a which where alpha is 0 okay 2 c1 plus c2 plus minus c3 this is 0 then 3 c1 plus c2 putting alpha to be 0 we get 0 dot c3 which is 0 okay now we check that whether the independent so we just make the augmented matrix 1 1 0 0 2 One minus one zero three one zero zero. Okay. As she said, we can check the determinant also, and we can just reduce in the Roy clon form and just check whether these three vectors are linearly independent or not. So I'll just straight away write the answer of the Roy clon form. So by reducing this, we get that uh, we get the Roy clon form to be one. Zero 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 one zero 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 one then zero. So from here we get that this is equal to saying that C one, C two, C three, all the three has to be zero. Okay. So that means that the only solution to this equation, the only solution to this this equation when alpha is zero is C one, C two, C three, all the three are zero. so that means when alpha is equals to 0 this set is linearly independent so this might be a solution fine okay so this was the for option a now i'll just erase this for b part for b part we take alpha to be alpha to be 1 so we just replace here by one and then again check as she said we uh, now we check for the determinant because the determinant is also a good idea to check for independent so we now calculate the determinant of this matrix so determinant come out to be determinant of this is 1 times 1 plus 1 then minus 1 2 Minus three. Okay, so this is one plus one. This is two. The determinant is two. So, so what about now? What can we say? The girl who answered for the we should check for the determinant. This matrix is invertible, right? Determinant is two. So what can we say about C one, C two, C three now? Who gave the answer for that? Uh, we should check for the determinant. Ma'am. Uh huh. Ma'am, actually in exam we can't do like uh, this much lengthy questions, na? So can we find direct determinant for which the determinant is zero for which alpha the determinant oh, is zero? Yeah. Right. I was just trying to explain, but that will be a very nice trick to do in exam. So what we can do is two, three, one, one, one. Zero minus one alpha. 
so we can just calculate the determinant from here so it comes out to be 1 times alpha plus 1 minus 1 times 2 alpha plus 3 thank okay. Uh, are the calculations fine? I hope. So alpha plus one minus two alpha plus three minus three. Sorry, minus three. So this is minus alpha minus two. Okay. So we have alpha is equals to the when we have for option A alpha is equals to zero, the determinant is minus two. Hence this is invertible. For option B, if alpha is one, for option B, where is the question? For option B, if alpha is equals to one, the determinant comes out to be minus three again non-zero. So this matrix is invertible. Then for option three, the answer is answer is zero. In this case, this matrix does come invertible. So this set of this set of vectors is not invertible. Uh, sorry, this set of Vectors is not independent. Hence, for because of this property, because of this third property, alpha equals to minus cannot be a answer for this to be a set of eigenvalues of the matrix N. Fine. So maybe that she suggested that instead of doing for each one separately, we just can. Uh, calculate the determinant in terms of alpha, and then just substitute the values of alpha and see for which values of alpha this comes out to be zero, and for which values it doesn't come out to be zero. Fine. Is it clear to everybody? Ma'am. Yes. Uh, hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes. You are very much audible. Uh, ma'am, uh, without checking the determinants, just we can just uh, subtract the second vector from the first vector. When the first vector from the second okay. vector, then we can uh, take minus two as the. That's why alpha satisfies the value minus two. So from this, we can also uh, get that answer. Uh, uh, wait a minute. You said that we can just uh, subtract the second vector from the first vector. No, okay, subtract fine. the first then vector get... from the second vector. Subtract the first vector okay, from the second so, vector to take the linear dependency. Okay, fine. Then, okay. Then you then are saying that. Uh, ha, alpha is equal to minus two satisfies the condition that this is uh, not linearly independent. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ha, fine. That is also very good. This is also a very nice trick he suggested. So since I'm doing questions that help you in general, not just for this question, but something that helps you in general for other questions as well. So that is why I just explained everything. Right. So this is also a very nice way of doing the stuff. So next we have this question. This is interesting. So the says that. Uh, this is also from 2021. So this says that if n is an integer which is uh, strictly greater than one, then consider the following following statement for an arbitrary n cross n matrices matrix with complex n trace, which satisfies. So the first statement says that if for some k, for some integer k. Uh, A is to power k is the n cross n identity matrix. Then all the eigenvalues of A are kth roots of unity. Fine. And the second statement says that if for some integer k greater than equal to one, all the eigenvalues of A are kth roots of unity. Then whether this satisfies this or not. So they have given us two statements, and then they ask that. either both of them are correct or one of them is correct so we have to you know justify the answer okay so explanation now i'll state a few properties of the characteristic polynomial so 
definition of characteristic polynomial fx is equal to determinant of a minus xi is the characteristic polynomial polynomial of three. fine okay second definition is about minimal polynomial minimal polynomial minimal polynomial of a is a polynomial of least degree least degree which a satisfies a satisfies now third property is minimal polynomial always divides the characteristic polynomial divides characteristic polynomial now as we have just seen that uh, polynomials in with the real coefficient need not always split completely for example x square plus 1 this polynomial does not split in r splitting means that this cannot be written as x minus alpha x minus beta where alpha and beta are in r fine so this is not equal to any such kind of thing here but any polynomial this is called the fundamental theorem of algebra i think so this i will just state any fx in cx that is a polynomial with complex entries splits completely completely in c that is that is this polynomial fx if it is of degree n then this can be written as x minus alpha 1 to x minus alpha n for some alpha i in c okay now when we see the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial then then if then if alpha 1 till alpha k are the distinct roots of distinct roots of characteristic polynomial i mean the roots can can repeat also so i am taking all the distinct roots of the characteristic polynomial then they are also they then they are also the roots of minimal polynomial the roots of the minimal polynomial so this fact is something we are going to uh, use in the given question okay so is this point 5 clear to everybody i mean it can be confusing for someone just let me know any problem to anybody someone no ma'am no ma'am okay thank you okay so now just look at this question first thing says that and one more thing hmm. if gx is a polynomial gx is a polynomial in uh, cx such that g of a is equals to 0 that is a satisfies g then the minimal polynomial divides gx divides gx this is also a very important point okay fine now just look at the point first if 
a raised to the power k is equals to i n. Then that means due to this point six, answer. Due to this point six, a satisfies satisfies x to the power k minus one. Right? Because we are given since. A power k minus identity matrix is zero, so this satisfies this thing, right? So this implies that minimal polynomial due to this point six, that minimal polynomial of A, minimal polynomial divides x to the power k minus one, and since all the eigenvalues appear as the root of the minimal polynomial, all the eigenvalues. Is equals to roots of the minimal polynomial. Minimal polynomial. So this implies. This implies all eigenvalues. The set of eigenvalues is contained inside. Sorry, I should write the set of eigenvalues. The set of eigenvalues is contained inside kth roots of unity. Because minimal polynomial divides x to the power k minus one, and all the roots of this thing are nothing but the kth roots of unity, right? So. The roots of minimal polynomial should be contained inside the set of The kth roots of unity. Fine, is it clear to everybody? This thing. Okay, uh, so we get that. I hope this is clear. If nobody is speaking anything, so we get the the set of eigenvalues is contained inside the set of kth roots of unity. So let us see at uh, statement first now. Um, I messed up. I think hmm. so. So this says that if this is satisfied for some integer k, then all the eigenvalues of A are the kth roots of unity. So this is what we are getting that all the eigenvalues are contained inside the set of kth roots of unity. So this statement is true because of all the reasons I gave. If anybody has any problem, just let me know. Okay. So now let let us look at the statement B. If for some integer k greater than or equal to one, all the eigenvalues are kth roots of unity, then this is satisfied. Okay. So now for the statement B, we are given that all the roots are just kth roots of unity. Then for the second statement. Okay. So. Uh, minimal polynomial. Minimal polynomial. I think this statement second should be not correct because um, okay, fruits of unity. Then this should be satisfied. Can somebody suggest something for the statement B, second statement? Ma'am. Yes. Uh, uh, the statement two says that after some integer k, all the eigenvalues are kth root of unity. So there may be some more distinct eigenvalues. So no, no, no. K... it's it says that if for some integer, for some integer k. And what a counter example will be okay. Uh, hmm. Yes. A to uh, power k is equals to i implies idempotent matrix, and idempotent matrix has always a uh, eigenvalues as modulus one. Right. Okay. Then. 
so a to power k is equals to i means it may have k distinct eigen values for of modulus one so they are the k kth root of unity uh they are the kth roots of unity fine for um, implies uh, for we uh, for we suggest a square is equals to i means i don't put in but the other way round and then you are saying that if a raised to power k is equals to i then uh, is identity matrix then you have that all the eigen values of our kth roots but it is the other way round ma'am can we suggest a counter example uh, yes, for yes, a 2 by 2 uh, i just mm -hmm. consider a 2 by 2 matrix where a is 1 1 0 1 1 is 1 1 0 this matrix all the eigen values are the uh, roots of unity but a square is not i mm -hmm. okay so Uh, its eigen values must be one minus x square. So its eigen values are one and one, right? But this square, as you are saying, this is not. Okay. So this is one. Then this is two. Ha. Huh, this is not identity. True. Fine. Thank you. So she gave us a matrix A to be one one zero one. And its eigen values are one and one. One have has multiplicity two, and it's so it's all its roots are the kth roots of unity, the twoth roots of unity. But but it does not satisfy a square is equals to identity. Please look at this example and let me know whether this is clear or not. Okay, so I assume that this is clear to everybody. Uh, the part A was quite complicated, so let me know if I need to explain you again. If somebody has problem, I'll give you one minute for this to think about. Ma'am, uh, please explain the part one once again. Okay, okay. Thank you for letting me know. So. let us look at the statement first carefully it says that if a satisfies this equation that means in terms of matrices a satisfies this polynomial fine for some integer k then they are asking us all the eigen values are k at roots of unity or not fine so first of all do you know the fact that if some polynomial is satisfying the matrix a then the minimal polynomial divides that polynomial Do you know this statement already? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we have that minimal polynomial divides this, and if we see in C, all the roots of the minimal polynomial are exactly the eigen values. Is exactly the set of eigen values. This is another fact. I mean, it cannot happen that as a root sum, as a root of the minimal polynomial, some eigen values miss. this cannot happen this is a fact okay you can check the proof or ask me after the session okay fine so now we have that minimal polynomial divides x raised to power k minus 1 so all the roots of the minimal polynomial should be con contained inside the set of roots of x raised to power k minus 1 which are the kth roots of unity fine Yes, ma'am. So all the roots should be all the eigen values should be kth roots of unity. So because of this statement, one is correct, and as one suggested that by some counter example, a is equals to one one zero one. This is wrong. Okay. So which one is correct? First is true, but second one is false. This is the correct option. now let us come to this okay this is um, again from jan 
so this question says that let m and r be the real vector space of all n cross n matrices with real entries n is greater than or equal to 2 and let a be a n cross n matrix consider the subspace w of m and r spanned by this thing uh, hello ma'am yes uh, can you please show the counter example for option 2 once ha huh, sure this this is the one is it fine okay ma'am okay 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 so uh, this says that now we just consider the uh, subspace w of n and r which is spanned by this set identity matrix a a square and so on then the dimension then they are asking about the dimension of w over r is necessarily one among the these now we know that the characteristic polynomial of this matrix a is of degree can somebody tell me what is the degree of the characteristic polynomial three n of n, n. right so this uh, this let us assume that fx is equals to this thing is the characteristic polynomial a n minus 1 this this is the characteristic polynomial characteristic polynomial of a then due to the kelly hamilton theorem f of a is equals to 0 which is a raised to power n n minus 1 so can somebody tell me that what can i say about the independence or dependence of the set a raised to power n minus 1 till identity matrix is this set linearly independent or dependent and also may or may not be may or may not be uh, why because for why? some integer k a to power k must be equals to a means may be it may be a for some matrix a uh, what can be a i'm asking that whether this set is linearly independent or not so ma'am uh, if we consider any matrix a for which a cube is equals to a then okay. it will be linearly dependent true then no 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 i think you are confusing in something else if we are given a set x1 to xn and we are able to find some scalar c1 till cn such that not all cis are zero some cis may be zero but not all are zero not all cis are zero and this satisfies an equation cn x1 plus cn xn is equals to zero then the set is said to be linearly dependent the set x1 till x okay is this the statement for linear dependence am i right or not yes ma'am ana so for this particular set a raised to power n a raised to power n minus 1 till the identity matrix we have this polynomial this polynomial equation and here the scalar the first scalar this one this is one so not all the scalars here are zero right this is one here one so is it linearly independent or dependent now answer think about it and answer me just take some ma'am hmm. i have one doubt means hmm. uh, there yes. x1 x2 xn are some polynomials of degree x so x is a small variable but here a is a matrix so for matrix a to the power k can be equals to a for some matrix a na so what is that case uh but here it does not matter whether this is matrix or whatever it is these are just the elements of some vector space okay and a raised to power n a raised to power n minus these are the elements this is a subset of this vector space na 
so just don't confuse between matrices and vector and whatever you are saying these are just the vectors of some vector space so these are again vectors of some vector space this is a subset of mnr and if you okay, are saying that for, for example if we have a raised to the power 3 is equals to a then this implies that this set is not linearly uh, independent because these two satisfies an equation where not all the coefficients are zero okay yes ma'am just see the definition of linear uh, dependence carefully so since are this set satisfies the characteristic polynomial so this set satisfies the characteristic polynomial so this implies that this set is not this set is linearly dependent linearly dependent okay and this set this set is contained inside span of span of i n a a square till this so this implies that dimension of this set dimension of this set is at least less than or equal to n in fact in fact strictly less than n okay so it cannot be infinity first fine because this is strictly less than n so it cannot be infinity it cannot be n square because it is strictly less than n it cannot be n square it cannot be n for as you can take a to be the identity matrix sorry not identity matrix you can take a to be a is equals to uh, 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 you can take it to be the zero matrix i think ha huh? the zero matrix 2 cross 2 zero matrix then in this case in this case the dimension becomes 1 and n is 2 okay so 1 is strictly less than 2 so this cannot be the answer so the answer should be at most n look at it and let me know whether it is clear or should i explain again Ma'am, uh, how did you prove that it is uh, linearly dependent? Uh, because it is satisfying an equation. Okay, okay, okay. Let me tell it again. Definition. Just first of all, just tell me the definition of linear dependence according to you. Let me take a set x one in some vector space. When do you say that this set is linearly dependent? when do you say this just tell me the definition ma'am when no, all scalars are not equal to 0 huh. ha when? when stated when properly scalars... stated properly there exist scalars ci in r such that not all cis are zero cis are zero and this equation is satisfied right this is the definition of linear dependence right yes ma'am now my claim is that this set is linearly dependent as a subset of mnr which set this set a square till a raised to power n right so my claim is that this set is linearly dependent linearly dependent okay so now i'll give you these cis such that not all cis are zero and this equation is satisfied okay so i'm taking cn to be 1 and this is my characteristic polynomial i already know this a not characteristic polynomial for a okay so i'm giving you the values of these cis take cn is equals to 1 cn minus 1 is equals to an minus 1 where an minus 1 is the coefficient of x raised to power n minus 1 in this equation okay and take c c uh, cn i take this cn is equals to a okay 
so since a satisfies f a that is we have a raised to power n plus a n minus 1 a raised to power n minus 1 till a not identity power n. so these are the elements of the set do you see any similarity between this equation and this equation here these two equations do you see any similarity yes ma'am so we get a list of scalar ci where not all cis are zero and this equation is satisfied this is zero this equation is satisfied so what do we conclude now it is a uh, linearly dependent right okay clear yeah. yes ma'am okay anybody else any problem to anyone okay i am assuming that it is clear now to everyone okay so now this one is a very interesting question and this is an example of one such kind of question which may appear very difficult when you first read it but it is very easy to eliminate the options and produce a counter example fine right? so this question says that let a b n n cross n invertible matrix and c b uh, n cross n nil potent matrix so nil potent matrix is can somebody tell me the definition just for the purpose of completion if uh, c to power n is equals to 0 then c is a nil potent matrix and all its eigen values are 0 okay. and what is n is it n is any natural n? number ha ah, any natural number so you should state it properly like if there exists some natural number n such that c raised to power n is 0 then we call c to be the identity matrix and uh, one of the property of nil uh, sorry nil potent matrix and one of the properties of the nil potent matrix is all its eigen values are zero fine thank you so now uh, it says that if x is a block matrix block matrix of this form x11 x12 x21 x22 is a 2 n cross 2 n matrix with each x i j being n cross n that commutes with the 2 n cross 2 n matrix b that is commute means commute means ki uh, x b is equals to b h then we have we are given with some uh, with some option that which one of these options are necessarily true okay so i have already produced the counter example we can just check with this okay fine you can give me your own counter example if you know one anybody or should i give my own we can check with your counter example can you explain that question once more uh, okay so this question says that a is a invertible matrix n cross n and c is a nil potent matrix n cross n okay and we are do you know the block matrix what are block matrices see no, this is nothing but just a representation of matrix i mean block matrix are these kind of matrices that a this is a matrix b is a matrix c is a matrix d is a matrix so we can just when we open this this is nothing but a matrix like for example these are all n cross n matrices then we write it as a11 just for the purpose of notation we write it in this form then a21 a2n b21 b2n this is again a, if a b c d all are n cross n matrices then this becomes 2n cross 2n matrix this is just a way of writing a matrix in which elements itself are matrices are called block matrices matrices in which elements itself are matrices are called block matrices 
so here like this is a matrix but these elements are not from real number or complex number these itself are matrices x11 x12 x21 x22 these are n cross n matrices again okay and we have another matrix b which is again a block matrix a c this is the zero matrix this is the zero matrix okay i'll write it in some simpler language and then explain and we are given that x and b commutes so we are given some options and we have to check this okay fine so first take a to be the identity matrix n cross n identity matrix and c to be the 0 1 1 0 so first just tell me whether a is invertible or not and whether C is nil potent or not. Let us check. I think uh, it's square only will give us the zero matrix. This is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. This is zero. So C is a nil potent matrix and A is an invertible matrix. Fine. This satisfies the given condition to us. Okay. Now let me you allow to use some notations. I will denote my matrix x11 to be x1 x1n x21 x2n and then xn1 till xn y sorry x12 to be the same matrix with notation yij x21 to be zij and x22 by w i j okay so now so now what we can do is just write it down and we take our n to be for the time being 2 just to create an counter example so this thing becomes this is x times matrix a how is it so this is the matrix b so we write x b just note it down that i am how am i writing it x11 x12 x21 x22 so this is the matrix this is the matrix x11 which was given in the question then y11 y12 y21 y22 then we have z11 z12 z21 and z22 this is the matrix x21 okay and y11 w w11 w12 w21 and w22 so this was the matrix x given to us time and the matrix uh, b is taking a and c to be the given things 1 0 0 1 then here we have zero matrix this thing this and then here we have what was it see okay so after solving this we get i'll directly write it down you can check the calculations later so this comes out to be x11 x21 0 x sorry let me so this comes out to be x11 this comes out to be x12 one two sorry this is wrong so this comes out to be x one two then this is zero then this is this one is y one one okay then this is x two one this is x two two then this is again everything zero and this comes out to be y two one this is Z11, Z12, 0, and this is W11, Z21, Z22, 0, and this is W21. Okay. This was XB. Now we calculate BX. BX is 1001, zero, zero, one, 0 matrix here. 0 matrix here. It seems like it is not clear to everyone. 
what is the problem this is just a notation don't be afraid of this block matrices are nothing but a way of writing big matrices so one big to two then w to one w to two so after solving this we get i'll write it here in small thing so this is x11 then x12 y11 y12 okay then x21 x22 y21 y22 let me extend it here becoming messy then z2 z22 w21 w22 and all the stuff zero here now we have two matrices which are equal fine so now we just equate the corresponding terms let please allow me to erase this thing there is less space to write so we have this matrix and this matrix these two matrices are equal so we can just compare the terms now see that this is this thing this uh, two cross two matrices are same in both both the things so we have so we have y11 is 0 y21 is 0 then w21 is 0 and this is the zero fine take care and y11 is y12 y21 is y22 w11 is w2 fine so this is done this is done so and then we have z11 is equals to z21 okay z21 is 0 z12 is z22 and the last term z22 is 0 z22 is 0 okay so this also comes out to be 0 fine now i think i can skip all the calculations needed can you do it yourself the calculation part anybody please speak yes ma'am we can do it ha uh, so oh my okay okay so you just do the calculation part and you can get the answer okay so i'll just skip this is a bit calculated so i will just skip this okay now this question is interesting and the answer is very cute to this so this says that let v let V be a finite dimensional vector space and T from V to V be a linear transformation. Okay, so V is a finite dimensional vector space. RT denotes the range of T and NT denotes the null space. Everybody notes the null space. So this is by definition. This is by definition all those V in V such that TV is zero. Okay. And we are gi given that rank. Rank means uh, the dimension of the range space. Range space ka dimension is called the rank. So we are given that rank of t is equals to rank of t square. Then we are asked that which of the following is or are necessarily true. Okay, fine. So for this, I need to know the statement of rank nullity theorem. Okay, so can somebody tell me the statement? Meanwhile, I just I will just connect the charger to my iPad. Anybody? Rational little care.
come on it is very basic you should know this before giving is important for a finite dimensional vector space v if p from v to v is a linear transformation then rank of p plus nullity of no, p no, is no. equal to dimension don't take from v to v give the general statement Ah, v to w. I'm sorry. Let it uh, t from v to, v to w itself. So then okay. rank of t then? plus knowledge of t will be the dimension of v. V. Uh, v or w? V v dimension of v. Sure. Sure. I think it is correct. It should be the dimension of v. Yes, yes ma'am. V. Mm -hmm. Okay. So dimension of mm -hmm. okay so so first we apply rank of ma'am your voice is breaking ma'am Okay, just give me a second. Is it fine now? Yes, ma'am. Fine. Okay. So we have uh, due to rank nullity theorem implied on t we have rank of t plus nullity of t is equals to dimension of v and again we apply rank nullity theorem on t square on the operator t square so we get rank of t square plus nullity of t square is equals to dimension of v so this implies that rank of t now equating these two equations because these two things, this thing and this thing, these both are equal to dimension of v. So we can write that nullity of nullity of t is equals to rank of t square plus nullity of t square, right? Is that right? So and we are given that rank of t is equals to rank of t square. So we can cancel this to this and we get that nullity of t is equals to nullity of t square. Right. But in the option A, we are asked that this is the dimension of null space. So we get that the dimension of null space of t is equals to the dimension of null space of t square. But we are asked that whether as a set, the null space of t is equals to the null space of t square. Right. So can somebody tell me the relation between null space of t and null space of t square? Which one is contained inside the other? I'm writing a statement. Someone need to tell me the verification for this. Is that right? Or this is right? The first one. First one. Why? Okay, let us just verify. Let x be in null space of t. So this implies key tx is equals to zero. So this implies that t of tx is equals to zero because this is a linear transformation, right? So this implies t square x is zero. So this implies that x belongs to null space of t square. So this one is right. Okay. Now just tell me that if we have two subspaces, one is contained inside the other and the dimension is equal. So what can we say about the subspaces? Are they themselves equal? 
can i conclude from this statement and this statement these two statements does this implies that null space of t is equals to null space of t square okay let me write it carefully if v is a vector space vector space w1 w2 are subspaces are subspaces and finite dimension finite dimension finite dimensional vector space are these are subspaces of v such that w1 is contained inside w2 and dimension of w1 is equals to dimension of w2 then they both are in fact equal has somebody seen it earlier yes yes so uh, so can i conclude from this statement that null space of t is equals to null space of t square yes ma'am hmm. okay thank you so statement a is correct right okay now we just check for the statement b okay we are given that rank of ha statement b also has the same explanation now can somebody tell me the relation between this and this whether this is true or this is true and you have to tell me the answer now this is simil very much similar to a so this one is true or this one is true anybody it is very easy please somebody say okay let me do it am i even audible to everybody yes ma'am it's audible okay okay so let me explain if it is not clear so let x belongs to range of t square okay so by definition this implies there exists some y in v such that x is equal to t of t square of y which is nothing but t of t of y so this x is equals to t of some vector in v so does it imply that x belongs to range of t so does it imply that the range of t square is contained inside range of t is it clear yes okay thank you so due to this thing and this fact and since we are given that rank of t is equals to rank of t square what can we say about this thing what can we say about b is it true or false it's true it's true thank you it's true okay thank ha huh, true now mm, part c coming over to part c part c rank of t intersection nullity of t this is zero okay so let us see let x belongs to intersection rank of t so this implies that tx is zero and there exist y in v such that x is equals to t of y to show that this is zero we need to show that x itself is zero right so okay so now applying t to this again what do we get now applying t we get 
dx is equal to t of t of y which is 0 okay so this implies because because of this we get this thing okay so this implies ki t of y or sorry y belongs to null space of t square which is null space of t right we proved this in part a so since this is in null space of t this implies t of y is equals to 0 so this implies x is equals to 0 just look at it and let me know whether if this is clear or not. It's clear, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. No, not next. There is one more part left. Okay, so part D says that is the uh, null space of T the zero vector? Can somebody guess the some answer? The answer should be no, I think. So can somebody produce a counter example? It's easy. Just give it a try. How about the zero vector? Rank T is equals to rank T square. It, it doesn't imply that rank uh, T is of full rank. T is of rank T square. Ma'am, is it okay to provide a counter example from R2 to R2? You can. For example? Uh, uh, T from R2 to R2, uh, where T is given by T of X comma Y is equal to X comma 0. T from R2 to R2 given by T of X comma Y is equals to X comma 0. Yes, okay. In this case, we can so see rank of T is equal to rank of T square. Uh, because in this case, right, that is true. T square is in fact equal to T here. So yes. rank of T is equals to rank of T square. Yes. And it's null spaces. Okay, null spaces. Sure. Uh, all the vectors of this form yes. y in r hmm. right and uh, how about if we take the zero linear transformation just the zero map everything goes to zero ah yes ma'am that's that's true that that's also true. works now hmm. yes ma'am okay. Okay. Hmm. okay so now this has over so i have some more questions to answer Okay. Now I'll take a question from again from GEM 2021. Okay. So this question says that A is a matrix from CN to CN. So this means just n tuples with entries from complex. Okay. B a linear transformation defined by A of Z1 till Zn goes to zn z1 till zn minus 1 okay so it asks which of the following is true for n greater than or equal to 2 and the options are i think i did not write the options. all eigenvalues are of modulus 1 determinant is 1 and the other two are somewhat like that only. 
uh, can you just tell me one was that a is singular one option was a is singular one is a is invertible uh ha this is this only na a is singular but it was mentioned i guess uh, all eigen values are of modulus 1 this was one option all eigen values are of modulus 1 um i think i have the question just give me a second sorry for the inconvenience so this is question i think i lost it somewhere anyway this was easy we can leave this question and do some other one this was easy we can leave no worries Ma'am, I got the options. Ah, I have to tell me. Hmm. One option was A is singular. Other A is nilpotent. A is nilpotent. And every eigen value of A is either zero or one. Eigen values of uh, C. This is D. All eigen values are either zero or one. Are either zero or one. Okay, and this one, one. Yes, is it right? That is one. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, first of all, a singular means is it not invertible? Because non-singular means invertible. So, singular means not invertible or not. so can somebody tell me whether this is invertible or not this uh, this transformation a answer yes ma'am it is invertible yeah this is very much clear right that this is invertible okay so i'll not explain that this is very trivial so you can do it yourself so it is given that a is singular so this is true or false Ma'am, hmm? yes. Actually, I have one doubt. Means, uh, when I was doing this question, I assumed hmm. that uh, the given matrix is permutation matrix. Ha, huh, this however, is a permutation matrix. You are right. See, I uh, mean, uh, however, the entries are complex, but it is permutation. So I have done like that only. So is it huh, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah, it is true. I also noticed that this is a permutation matrix. When you uh, compute the matrix. using those e1 e2 i mean 1 0 0 10 0 1 0 and other things so we get it as a permutation matrix you are right okay okay thank you ma'am so then can a invertible matrix be nilpotent anybody no it can't why because uh, a singular means a invertible matrix uh, has none of its eigen values as zero but in nilpotent matrix all the eigen values are zero right excellent very good a uh, invertible matrix can not uh, be nilpotent and nilpotent and the other way round and a nilpotent matrix can never be can never be invertible as she said that a uh, invertible matrix can never have zero as an eigen value while all the eigen values of a nilpotent matrix are zero so this is wrong fine right? next part is all eigen values of uh, all eigen values are of modulus 1 so Uh, the girl who was saying about permutation matrix can you answer this part b yes ma'am uh, for permutation matrix uh, here a square will be equals to i identity matrix 
and uh, uh, it is does every the... every permutation matrix satisfies that that a square is identity no not necessary but a to power k is equals to i for every permutation matrix what is k k is uh, sorry where k is any natural number a to power k will be equals to i for any permutation matrix because it is a cyclic matrix okay uh, for any natural number k or does there exist some natural number k just there, be careful there these exists two things a natural are number k yes right very good okay yes. so she is saying that there exists a natural number k there exists k in n such that a raised to power k is the identity matrix n cross n identity matrix okay so a raised to power k just means the let us write it as the matrix representation of this vector a okay so this is this so as we have done that question that all its roots are of are if some matrix a satisfies this equation then all eigen values are kth roots of unity we have done that na in one of the question we did on the second turn or something so all the so this implies all eigen values of a eigen values of a are kth roots of unity so this implies that they are of modulus 1 so this one is right fine i hope this is clear to everybody now for part d any guesses so d is wrong you have to produce a counter example can anybody give me a counter example for part d ma'am uh, with the previous statement for the option c that uh, uh, eigen values of an invertible matrix cannot be zero from that statement we can discard this option d but they are saying either 0 or 1 they did not say that 0 has to be an eigen value uh, okay i mean even if it has eigen value 1 then also the statement is true na they are saying either 0 or 1 they did not say that 0 has to be an eigen value Yes, ma'am. Ma uh, this uh, if all the eigen values are either zero or one, then mm -hmm. this may be an idempotent matrix like a square is equals to a or a to power k is equals to a, and a permutation By... matrix repeats itself. No, no, I don't think so. That it has to be of the power a raised to power k is equals to a. Because But, why? Because Mm, yes. Uh, what I was saying is, uh, we have some. Uh, there exists a k such that a to power k equals to a. Then the eigen values are either zero or one. This is property of idempotent matrix. Right. But is so, is it the other way round that if the if a matrix has eigen values zero or one it only then it is uh, of the form a raised to power k is equals to a something. No, I guess the uh, converse is not true. Mm -hmm. Then we cannot say anything about this. Then from option two, we can discard option D, na? Option two. Right. Very good. Very smart answer. Because are either zero, but uh, no, 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 no. We can't. As the Girl said, "No, that she was saying that are either zero or one, but they did not say that zero has to be an eigen value." What you are saying just implies that zero cannot be an eigen value, but what one can be an eigen value, and still this this statement is true, even if zero is not an eigen value. Did you understand? Actually, D statement yeah. must be true because for permutation matrix, a to power k will be equals to a because after some mm -hmm. time it goes repeating. 
so mm, it implies okay. that a permutation matrix is eigen potent matrix so all eigen values are either zero or one no 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 um eigen potent matrices for example if some matrix has um if some matrix has this characteristic polynomial okay then it becomes a times a cube minus 1 right so its eigen values are eigen values are 0 w1 w1 square and 1 where w1 is the third root of unity is the primitive third root of unity you are right in the sense that if you see the real eigen values then those uh, eigen values will be just 0 and 1 but there can be complex eigen values as well so you are missing on the complex eigen values okay because here we are taking a to be a is a vector space over c so let me give you the counter example which i constructed for this okay so just take n is equals to 3 okay then e1 to be 1 0 0 e2 to be 0 1 0 e3 to be 0 0 1 is that clear what you were saying was was not right somewhat clear but i have to take it again ha uh ha -huh. you just think about it okay so if we take n to be 3 these to be this then just note down that e1 goes to e1 goes to what anybody this is a of z1 z2 z3 is z3 z1 z2 So E one goes to what? Is it E two? Zero one zero. E two. Hmm. And E two goes to E three. E three. E three goes to E one. E one. Oh, okay. So its matrix representation is with respect to this basis beta. Beta is this if. if we take beta is equals to this with respect to beta this is e1 goes to this this is 1 0 this is 0 0 1 as she said this is a permutation uh, this is a permutation matrix this is 1 0 0 <laughs> now, uh, now calculate its determinant now calculate its characteristic polynomial so it comes out to be determinant of minus x 0 1 1 0 1 minus x so this comes out to be minus x plus 1 is it okay let me calculate it ma'am ma'am hmm yes actually na for the last statement it is either 0 or 1 so 0 to aise bhi nahi aa sakta hai hamare paas तो हमारे पास बच्चा वन लेकिन ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है कि परमिटेशन मैट्रिक्स में सिर्फ वन आइगन वैल्यू हो इट कैन बी ओमेगा एंड ओमेगा स्क्वायर माइनस वन सो दैट्स द रीजन दैट इज व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू शो हियर बट हियर आइगन वैल्यूज विल बी थर्ड रूट ऑफ यूनिटी यस मैम गॉट इट गॉट इट ना सो इट्स कैरेक्टरिस्टिक पॉलीनोमियल कम आउट टू बी दिस सो इट्स वन ऑफ इट्स आइगन वैल्यूज वन एज वेल बट देयर आर अदर आइगन वैल्यूज आल्सो which are third root of unity which is not one okay i hope it is clear to everybody now yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes fine uh now i will just do one last question from jem and then is there anybody who knows about linear operators and its theory i mean linear bounded operators linear operator i know ma'am uh, bounded operators do you know 
um baby if in question, some... if in question uh, i see i will get to know uh, have you read about open mapping theorem and all no not open matrix anybody here no open mapping theorem anybody here know about open mapping theorem can i do one question related to that from nbhm yes ma'am we will get to know something new okay 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 just give me a second okay just one last question from nat and then i will do that question from jim so here we need to find the determinant of this matrix the determinant see there are very interesting properties of determinant of a matrix you can reduce your calculations using th those properties so i will state those properties and this question becomes very easy using those during the jam examination you have to be very much fast in your calculations you know this is not necessary for research purposes but in jam you need to be very fast it is very important 2020 2021 so if we calculate the determinant of this matrix using our regular method it will not be possible in the given frame of time so Ma'am, state yes. Is it um, minus two zero two one? Hmm. Yeah, but I got two zero two one. Maybe that does not matter. We just see the method, and it doesn't. The answer doesn't matter. You can check it later. The calculation part. Okay. So I'll state a few properties of determinant. Properties. so if we apply a row operation row operation means some if a is given a matrix and we apply the row operation here that for example some ri matlab row i goes to some row i plus alpha times some row j where j is not equal to i then determinant of the matrix a is equals to determinant of the matrix which we get after applying this row operation okay is the statement clear similarly for the column operations for the column operations is the statement clear this thing clear to everybody Yes, what do i mean okay so but when we apply this operation that we are multiplying a row by some vector lambda lambda of ri or some lambda in whatever field you are taking then determinant of a is equals to can somebody tell me what is the value of this thing i mean the determinant of a and the determinant of a uh, the matrix we get after applying after multiplying lambda what lambda is the to the power n means and if we have n by n matrix then it will be lambda to the power n uh, lambda to the power n are you sure because in identity matrix if i multiply row 1 by 2 ma'am uh, you are operating only for one row only up for one row so it will be lambda it will be lambda times yes okay so 1 001 but as she said third property we can state that determinant of any matrix this thing when we apply lambda times this thing then this becomes lambda raised to power n lambda raised to power n comes out where a is the n cross n matrix okay 
so this is determinant of f right so now using these properties we just solve our equation uh, we solve for the determinant so first determinant of this matrix 2021 2021 2021 2021 this might be very easy for some students but i need to explain as not everybody is aware of the method or if you are being bored when 2020 2021 okay so we can what we can do is we can subtract row 4 from row 3 the determinant remains the same right due to property 1 so this becomes 0 0 0 0 1 this becomes 2021 2021 2021 2021 2020 2020 and within the same matrix we can do one more operation that we can reduce row 2 to row 2 minus row 1 so we get 0 1 Zero zero. Then what's the first operation that you have applied? R four goes to. I'm reduce R four goes to. Oh sorry, I made a mistake. R four minus R three. I wanted to write. Hello. It is R four minus R three. Okay, fine. Yes, ma'am. So this is twenty twenty, and the second operation. R two goes to R two minus R one. Twenty 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 twenty. So this is the matrix which I get. Now one more operation I will apply, which is R three goes to R three minus R three minus R one. So okay. So this is twenty twenty one. Ma'am. Twenty twenty. Yes. Uh, I have one doubt. जब मैं हिंदी में बोलू हाँ यस प्लीज तो मैम जब हम रो ऑपरेशन करते हैं जब ये डिटर्मिनेंट निकालना होता है तो हमेशा हम अपर अपर लाइन माइनस लोअर लाइन करेंगे या लोअर लाइन माइनस अपर लाइन नो एनी थिंग एनी थिंग डेट इज वाई थ्योरी इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट ये नहीं मैम अगर आपकी बात सही है की हम कुछ भी कर सकते बट मैंने ऐसे बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन किए ना तो अगर हम अपर लाइन माइनस लोअर लाइन करते हैं तो एक बार नेगेटिव डिटरमिनेंट आता है लोअर लाइन माइनस अपर लाइन करेंगे हर जगह तो अलग डिटरमिनेंट आएगा इसीलिए आपका टू जीरो टू वन आया और मेरा माइनस टू जीरो टू वन आया नो 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 एक्चुअली व्हाट यू मस्ट बी डूइंग ओके आई गॉट यूर डाउट आई थिंक वॉट यू मस्ट बी डूइंग इज यू आर मल्टीप्लाइंग हियर बाय समथिंग what you must be doing you must be sending ri to minus ri plus rj this must be the mistake you are be making so ma'am matlab that... hame hamesha hmm. uh, lower matlab jo row pe hum operate kar rahe hai wo pehle rakhni hai aur ha uske sath kuch bhi multiply nahi hoga uske sath kuch bhi multiply nahi hoga जिस रो को हम चेंज कर रहे हैं उसके साथ कुछ मल्टीप्लाई नहीं होना चाहिए दिस एल्फा शुड बी ऑन द अदर रो ओके गॉटिक मैम थैंक यू ओके इफ यू वांट टू डू दिस थिंग देन सेंड आर जे टू दिस आर जे टू माइनस आर आई प्लस आर जी ओके यस मैम गॉट इट सो यू जस्ट सी द रिलेशन यू आर सेइंग बिटवीन दिस थिंग एंड दिस थिंग सो व्हेन यू आर डूइंग दिस थिंग यू आर कंसीडरिंग दिस फैक्ट आल्सो to take minus out because now what you you did is you multiplied your row ri with some lambda which is minus 1 here in this case when you are doing this thing this thing okay okay um this is one okay And then so this was one this was zero Okay. Now we can. So now R one goes to R one minus twenty twenty R two. So this becomes 
2021 this becomes zero this becomes 20 20 2020 0 1 0 0 okay now r1 goes to yes we can directly find the determinant by the above step as 2020 uh, yes yes you can i think from this step also it is easy to do so should i leave it here for the calculation part yes ma'am okay okay you can calculate the final answer but what i needed to tell you that these things are very important these three properties are very important there are many such questions which comes every year so just be careful with the mistake she was making when she was multiplying this alpha with rho i itself rho i itself that is why it is very important to read books carefully okay okay i think mm, then does everybody know about open maps no okay, ma'am first of all does everybody know about uh, open sets in rn no i think this will be uh, too much for you you should have done matrix spaces right okay then it's not then i think i should stop here because uh, those nbhm questions uses some uh, topology which i think bsc people need not be aware about so yeah ravina yeah ravina bsc students may not be aware about matrix spaces Ah, yes, some universities okay. so i think we can stop now yeah yes uh, our time is all uh, also yeah ramina you may please turn on your video okay sir yeah sure. thank you ravina for this nice session with a good collection of problems from different areas of linear algebra and uh, now it is the time of interaction uh, dear participants you can share your doubts or express your feedback about the session good afternoon ma'am good afternoon sir ma'am um, your session was really very wonderful and uh, the question the collection of question was really good and uh, we get to know many different methods to solve a particular question so there were many things that uh, uh it was new to me uh, today and i got many new uh, approach to solve a questions thank you ma'am thanks a lot looking forward for more such session from your side thank you thank you vinod sir thank you thank you sir Uh, is yeah revina let me ask uh, one thing if you could uh, share some experience uh, about the msc mathematics course in jnu and the admission procedure and all that it will be really helpful for uh, okay so uh, the year we got admission in jnu since the msc program was just started so we had one jnu ee entrance exam okay so that exam i think of 2 hours and that consisted questions of math is it is it online or uh, online. offline exam that consisted online. of questions from math only nothing else and now i think they have okay. how many how many seats are there how many sorry how many seats are there uh, for msc mathematics that time there was 40 intake 40 okay okay um, but uh, now i think they have reduced it and the selection pattern also has changed i don't know somebody told me that i don't know but in our times it was like that we had exam and then we got selected so this was the way we got there 
and i will suggest jnu okay. to faculty are very good there although there are uh, very less faculty but they are all very good in their respective areas so i highly suggest if you are very much serious in mathematics otherwise they'll make you fail there were four students who were failed in msc program so if only if you are serious in mathematics then join jnu Yeah, even though it's a small department and new department, uh, the faculty members are really good from uh, eminent institutes. All have done PhD from eminent institutes like TAFR, IMSC, etc. Okay. So I suggest that you go for the entrance exam there. So others, uh, if you have anything to share, please do it. Share any feedback? Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. I'm Anamika. I'm currently uh, preparing for IIT Jam exam. Wonderful exam. Uh, wonderful class, ma'am. Uh, your uh, new approaches uh, for each questions were was wonderful. Thank you for this class. And um, please uh, share your notes to us. It will be useful. Uh, okay, I do. Okay, Thank I'll share on the group. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We know it's also. Okay. Thank you, Anamika. Yes. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I'm Shyama Singh Kumar. I'm finally a BSc student at Ambedkar University, Bangalore. Hi, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, today's class was really helpful. Thank you so much. Most welcome, Shyama. Shyama. Thank you, Shema. Thank you all. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I am Pravin. Wonderful Pravi. audience. Pravin, uh, you are Christ answering Lord. very constantly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So uh, today's session was very interactive and it was very engaging. And uh, the approaches like elimination of the options and all was very insightful. Uh, thank you, uh, ma'am. Uh, I find linear algebra comparatively tough uh, as compared to differential equation or multivariable calculus. So can you suggest something to make it like feel more easy? What I've experienced in these years of being in into mathematics is just read books carefully that is very much helpful you know students nowadays what do they do is just take somebody's notes and you know take some notes from some uh, coaching center that is very harmful for your mathematical point of view i mean you should read books carefully first that is very important so for linear algebra i think fredberg is a nice book this is basic and easy to understand so you should go with fredberg only i think for jam later in msc for if you are preparing for net and all you can see hof when and kunze linear algebra has very compact syllabus and this subject is very much scoring if you prepare well and just read books carefully this is easy as well Book ma'am, okay. can you explain uh, name that? Fred Buck. I think it is Introduction to Linear Algebra by Fred Buck. Okay ma'am. Yeah, the point that uh, Ravina uh, commented is very remarkable. See, in order to understand the concepts well, you should learn the uh, subject from exactly from the masters that means uh, books by great persons that is very much important if you go for some short notes and uh, uh, <laughs> okay like that kind of uh, capsule type things then it will be helpful in competitive examinations but uh, it, it won't be helpful in having a clear understanding of the course understanding of the concepts yes Sir, I am Nandakumar from Tamil Nadu, sir. I am a research scholar. Uh, even though I am a research scholar, it was very useful for me, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful session and your initiative, sir. It was a great initiative by you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, 
very uh, thank you, Ravina, for this uh, nice session and uh, your valuable time uh, in between your uh, tedious research and all that. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, spending your time with our students and wish you all success in your future career and research. Thank you, sir, for inviting me here. Uh, I truly enjoyed the series of session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let us wind up here.